Welcome along. You join us at Fujitsu World Tour London, where the theme of this year is driving a trusted future. The rapid evolution of new technologies, new structures, new ecosystems, all brought about by digital disruption, causes a few questions and headaches, doesn't it? I mean, how do we deliver value back to the business for colleagues, the boardroom, our customers, even society at large? But we've got your back covered this year at Fujitsu World Tour. We're exploring the mix of partners, technologies, skills, and solutions that you need to address all of the challenges facing your organization right now. And that's the purpose of these videos. By subject matter expert, we're going through and looking at the tangible problems you're facing and we're going to get you some key answers. Up next, we're talking security. Now, if you're a C-suite officer and you're not taking your security serious enough, I would urge you to pay attention for the next six minutes. The stats I'm about to give you underpin why you should pay attention to the importance of what you should be doing. So over the next two years, it's estimated 20 billion IoT devices are going to be connected worldwide. It's forecast that 80% of enterprise traffic is going into the cloud by 2020. Here's the kicker. The cost of cybercrime felt by businesses last year alone, $600 billion. Security is a very apparent threat to your business, but you don't need to be fearful of it. You just have to be getting things right. And to help us what we help us understand what we should be getting right, I'm joined by uh, Haroon Malik, who is... Let me get this right. Director of Cyber Security here at Fujitsu. Haroon, thanks for taking Pleasure. time out of your, your schedule. Those stats, we obviously don't want to scare anyone, but what does all that mean for uh, cyber security and threat assessments? What, what's changed within the marketplace? Yeah, so I think cyber security is one of those things that continues to evolve. Uh, the threats are becoming more and more advanced, more and more complex, more and more targeted. I think th there's two sides here, really. I think the first side is that businesses are starting to adopt more and more technology. Uh, you know, you mentioned the cloud, AI, IoT, and that's great, you know, whether it be for improving efficiency, whether it be for driving digital trust, for improving or streamlining the processes, that's one side of the coin. But what that essentially does is it, it increases what we call the um, cyber attack surface. There are now more ways to hack us to get into a network. So while on one side, we're using all this wonderful technology and you know, the, you know, these uh, IoT devices, there's a whole myriad of ways in which hackers can get into the network. You know, you think of IoT. Um, it's great that uh, we can use IoT uh, for our fridges to order new milk when we've run out of milk. But just imagine, you know, connected cars, you know, the first car hijacking or um, a vulnerability in an IoT medical device which gives an overdose to a patient, you know, that's when it starts to get really, really serious. So I think those stats are great, but I think in terms of the threat landscape, it's going to continue to get more and more advanced. There's going to be new ways to attack a system's network and people, essentially, as well. And I guess that problem's only going to scale for larger businesses. So how, how, how do those big enterprise companies future-proof themselves? What do they need to be doing? Well, I think the good news is in 2019, we are now starting to see companies realise that that silver bullet approach, that technology-only approach, is, not, is no longer going to work. Really, when I talk to organisations, it's really around providing that, uh, what we call a multi-pronged, multi-layered approach to cybersecurity that uses people process and technology. So not just the technical elements, but things like training and cultural awareness, things like strategy, the things like uh, intelligence-legged um, security, um, uh, the thing, things like user behavior monitoring. You know, these are all things that we ask businesses to do. And it's important to realize that cybersecurity for businesses is not one of those things where you do a load of stuff and then you stop. You know, the threat landscape is constantly changing. It's about constantly evaluating your risk. You know, we've got to a certain maturity. Where do we need to go now? So things like, for example, um, understanding what high value assets you have. You know, the amount of companies we go and visit where they haven't actually identified what data is a target is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Likewise, getting the basics right. You know, we come to a lot of companies where they invest millions in, in millions in AI systems, threat detection, but Getting the basics right, like, you know, are you doing patching? Are you doing vulnerability scanning? Have you got visibility in your network into the cloud environments? You know, those are the, the sorts of things that we talk to companies about. And, and finally, you know, how do you future-proof a company on cybersecurity? I think cyber incident response is absolutely key. If you were to have a cyber attacker tomorrow, how can you be confident that you have the tools and the technology and the people to respond to that technology in the right way? So things like cyber incident planning, um, tabletop exercises, you know, going through that scenario to, to make sure that, you know, you have the tools you need to defend yourself from a cyber attack if it Smart occurs. Smart scenario planning. Yes, absolutely. 
obviously profitability is yeah. one risk to um, tackling cybercrime. We get that. Yeah. But what about trust? Obviously, the theme of this year's event yeah. here is driving a trusted future. Yeah. How does it impact trust? Absolutely. So if you asked me this question sort of five or six years ago, cybersecurity is one of those things that's, that was seen as a, we need to protect our data and we need to protect our organization. I think now in 2019, the key ROI metric for cybersecurity is how are we using it to drive customer behaviors? How are we using it to drive, uh, how are we using it to enable customer trust? How are we using cybersecurity to uh, enable us to do things in new and efficient ways? So, you know, cybersecurity needs to be a driver of all those areas, not, not that typical obstacle that we've seen in the past that, you know, you can't access these sites, you can't have these devices. It's around how do we use cybersecurity to drive profitability? And and I think once companies see that side of cyber, there, there's more investment for it. I know we shared some sort of stats at the, the, the top of the interview, and obviously you've given us some, some key insights. But is it fair to say that the bigger the organization, the more challenging the, 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 the problem? Um, do they have uh, differing challenges implementing preventative measures for, for cyber? It's a really, really good question. So in my experience, or in Fujitsu's experience, it's not really the size of the organization, it's the type of organization and the type of sector. And um, we have to realize that cybersecurity is one of those things that depending on what sector you're in, you will have slightly different threats. You know, the financial sector will have its own set of threats. Uh, the public sector will have their own set of threats. So I wouldn't say it's the size of the organization. You know, recent, you know, the new research actually shows that it's SMEs that are targeted more and more now. Why? Because normally they underinvest in cybersecurity, but they they have huge amounts of personal data and information. So they are the target. So if anything, I think the large organizations are beginning to cotton on and, and start to do something about it. But it's the SMEs and the smaller organizations uh, that really need to, 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 to mature themselves in this space. I'll put you on the spot now. Hmm. Do we think the threat of cyber is high enough on the CEO's agenda at the moment? Or are they still leaving it to the technologists within the, the organization? It's a very good question again. So I think we've moved quite, we've, we, you know, we've moved far in the, in the last two or three years. I think um, now compared to sort of two or three years ago, CEOs are more and more aware of cybersecurity and the damage it can do to an organization if they are not adequately protected. But you know, here's the thing, it, it's, it's one thing for a CEO to have it on their radar what I tend to find is that it's the, you know, the problem is what do we do about cybersecurity? It's on our risk register. What do we need to do? Where do we need to put our investment? You know, what, you know, what should our strategy be? What sort of people should we, you know, should we employ? I think those are the questions that CEOs and the C-suite tend to struggle with. Right. That might be your next answer. I yeah. was going to say to you, if you had one message for uh, the, the, the CEOs out there, the CIOs, CTOs, yep. if you had one message for them around yeah. cyber security, what would it be? My, 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 my advice would be, please don't think you're immune from a cyber attack. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean you're under a cyber attack already. You know, there's, it, it, there's two types of organizations, those that have had a cyber attack and know, and those that have had a cyber attack and don't know. So right. you know, this needs to be taken very, very seriously. Sage advice. Harine, thank you so Pleasure. much for stopping by and Pleasure. talking to us. Hopefully that's fueled you with some key insight and empowered you with the right questions to take back into your organisation to make sure you're being preventative and don't definitely become one of the reactive statistics and adding to that $600 billion of losses we've heard about. There's still plenty more insight to come from Fujitsu World Tour uh, this year. By the time we finish at the end of World Tour, we'd have brought you interviews across AI, blockchain, quantum, the security section now, multi-cloud, innovation, operational excellence, workplace, a trusted future, the connected world, retail, transport, automation and financial services, no less. All you need to do is go onto our social channels, put in the relevant keyword to your organization or any of the topics you've just heard that are driving some curiosity, and we will get you insight to the very challenges your business is facing right now. That's what these interviews are all about. Thanks for watching.